What's up, everyone? <laughs> Welcome to Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. My name is Jess Beagle, joined today by Justin Lorber, a.k.a. Future Dodgers, talking trade deadline stuff. So I figured, hey, Justin, we got to get you in to talk Dodger prospects. I know you're working on your uh, your midseason rankings updates. You're pretty close over there, right? Yeah, it's basically set, uh, you know, give or take one or two spots for, for each person. But the structure is yeah. You, and now you got to wait a week to make sure some of those guys actually are still in the organization by the time you finish your list. Yeah, well, it goes it goes beyond the list. So there's you know a, a few excess guys who, depending on who gets moved, could move in. Love it, love it. Well, the question I want to ask you is: as the Dodgers are are preparing for the trade deadline, we know there are a bunch of potential trades out there: Lucas Giolito, even a Nolan Arenado. All those guys are going to cost prospect capital. We know the Dodgers have one of the best, if not the best farm system. And so when I was thinking about wanting to have you on, the question I wanted to ask, and, and I'll kind of just let you run with this, is which Dodger prospects do you think are most likely to be moved? And to frame this, in my own mind, I'm thinking of a couple things. One is maybe there's a guy that you're like, hey, the Dodgers might sell high on him, or hey, maybe they've seen enough, or even it could just be a preference. Hey, this guy, as he's developed, doesn't really fit the mold of what the Dodgers like. It could be a roster issue, a guy who's already on the 40 man roster or who would need to be added. So I'll let you go wherever you want, but of all the guys in the farm system, are there a handful of names that jump out to you as like, if someone's going to get moved, I would not be shocked if it was this person. Uh, I think, and you probably won't be surprised by this answer. Uh, first name that comes to mind is a guy like Michael Bush. Yeah. And that's not to say that I, I would move him, but uh, you know, He's done pretty well at AAA. He's he's already 25. Uh, I think in a lot of organizations, he would be getting a consistent major league shot or at least would have had one by now. Uh, to this point, he hasn't with the Dodgers. Um, so might be a guy that other teams look at and see as an, as an impact contributor immediately. Uh, whereas at Dodgers, he's, he's just kind of minor league depth. Or maybe that's underselling him a yeah. little bit. But uh, he is just depth for right now, at least on the current version of the team. Uh, I would also look at the lot of upper level pitching that they have and that extends into guys who are currently in the majors, you know, uh, Miller, Sheehan, Grove, uh, you know, all the way down to double A. They really just have a ton of really talented minor lead starters uh, between double A and the majors and uh, controllable young pitching uh, that's valuable for every team and any team is going to want or at least be interested in one of those, you know, nine or 10 guys that they have at those three levels. Yeah. And I, I mean, it feels like when you look at the system, starting pitching is absolutely the strength, right? Like if the Dodgers are going to trade out of a position where they have immense wealth, obviously catcher is another position we're going to talk about here in a second, but it feels like starting pitching a is more valuable around the league. But as far as what the Dodgers have to offer, you mentioned it. I mean, the double A rotation all the way up into the guys who are now the back half of the major league rotation, lots of young pitching. So it does seem like that could make some sense to trade out of that piece of abundance. Yeah, definitely. And, it, you know, it's something that every team can use. It's not like you have, you know, one catcher, one shortstop, whatever. Uh, every team needs starting pitching. Every team needs more than five starting pitchers. Uh, but especially with those guys, you know, any of the you know ten or so guys that are, are frequently talked about at Double A, Triple A, and the majors, uh, all of them are either impact contributors this season or potentially next season. Uh, so even for rebuilding teams, even for a team maybe like uh, the St. Louis Cardinals who uh, would like to contend next year and surprisingly haven't this year, uh, those are all guys who could potentially help them out in the near future. Yeah, no, totally makes sense. One other piece on this, and it's something I've mentioned a lot, and and I'm curious if you agree, but it does feel like the Dodgers every year are headed towards a 40-man roster crunch. First, to me, as I look at all the guys who are on the 60-day IL, combined with the guys who are already on the 40-man roster, combined with the two or three guys that probably need to get protected from the Rule 5 draft this offseason, it kind of feels like there's an, at an abundance of, of guys in that, sort of 40 man range that, that they kind of need to move some of those guys quickly or risk losing some of them for nothing, having to DFA losing in the rule five draft. Like, do you feel is, is this, am I crazy for thinking this year feels like that's more of a pressing need for the Dodgers to maybe unload some of those guys than it has in years past? 
I would actually say less. I think there have been okay. years. Um, trying to think. I think last, maybe last year was it was one of those years where uh, they had a crunch. If I'm remembering correctly, uh, this year I think it's a little less. At least at the top, uh, for me, the biggest guy who has to be added is Nick Frasso, uh, and then. Kyle Hurt, Landon Knack, two more guys who I think would be in strong contention to be added, along with uh, some other guys who are already eligible and, and haven't been taken. You know, Jose Ramos, Hunter Fiducia, uh, Devin Mann, uh, Gus Varland was taken in the Rule 5 draft last year and was returned. Uh, I think given the way he's been pitching at AAA, uh, if he's not added, he I think he'd be a threat to be taken again. Um, so, so there's a lot of guys who I think, you know, would have a potential to be added, but not as many pure locks as I've seen in years past. Okay, fair enough. For now. Fair enough. Let's let's play a little game. And this was an idea of yours that I, I thought was a really good one. When you look at the Dodgers trade assets in the minor leagues, there are a bunch of categories where it feels like the Dodgers have an opportunity to kind of choose between two players who play maybe not the exact same position, but kind of fit the same mold, maybe slightly different positions, middle infield, but maybe one's a second base and one's a shortstop, that kind of thing. And I'm curious, I'm not asking you who the Dodgers would value higher. I'm asking you for you personally, if you were Andrew Friedman and a team said, hey, we want one of these two guys, who would you rather keep and who would you be more willing to give up? So the first one is a couple guys that everyone's going to be familiar with. It's Michael Bush and Miguel Vargas, both guys who presumably are going to be second baseman at the next level. Very different hit tools. One's kind of a hit for average, hit for contact doubles. The other is more of a boomer bust power guy. We know how the Dodgers feel. They are clearly in Miguel Vargas's camp. For you, if you had to choose between these two, knowing what we do about Miguel Vargas's stint at the major leagues, would you be on Team Michael Bush or Team Miguel Vargas? Uh, it's it's really close, uh, but I will go with Vargas, uh, despite okay. the major league struggles. Uh, a little younger, a little bit higher on the defensive spectrum. Um, so I, I would go with Vargas there, although it's, it's really close and – uh, you know, I, I think Bush, given the opportunity, uh, might even be a more valuable player right now for a major league team. Uh, yeah. But long term, very close, would go with Vargas. Okay, this one might be the most fun of all of them. The Dodgers have two of the best catching prospects in baseball, who are both among the best prospects in all of baseball. Diego Cartaya has long been atop everybody's prospect list among the Dodgers, especially with Bobby Miller out of the picture. Uh, Cartaya is struggling in his promotion this season. Dalton rushing continues to hit everything really, really hard. Are, are we ready to move Dalton rushing ahead of Diego Cartaya or are we sticking with the status quo and, and saying Cartaya is still the more valuable asset? Uh, you know, this is going to depend on who you ask. Uh, and I'll, I'll spoil this. Uh, rushing is my number one prospect in the system wow. right now. Um, I, I think you really have to feel good about, uh, what he offers with the bat. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't see anything that, you know, is like an obvious move off catcher right now. Um, yeah. I, I think the offensive floor as well as the upside with rushing, uh, in addition to Tartaya's struggles this year, at double a and, and granted the jump from high a to double a is considered the hardest in the minor leads. Tartaya is several years younger than the average player, uh, in the Texas lead. So, you know, it's not like uh, these struggles, you know, we can just write him off. But rushing right now, what he's doing, uh, I, I think predicates a, a move up to the top of the system. That said, I wouldn't expect Hartaya to be dealt just because they would be dealing him, you know, at a lower point than probably his, you know, his talent would otherwise indicate. Yeah, it's crazy to me, rushing obviously coming through college and then looking and realizing these guys are only like six or eight months apart in age. So it, it's not like rushing is three years older than Cartaya. Um, Cartaya is actually ahead of him in the system, I believe, right? Rushing is still in high A, is that right? Yeah, he is. I, I wouldn't be shocked if if he gets to move to double A at some point. Uh, obviously, Diego Cartaya is there and you know they, they would have to figure out um, – time sharing, but I'm sure they can make it worth it. They, they did it with uh, Ruiz and Smith a few years back. Um, and, and once again, another duo of, of top 100 catchers in the system, which uh, multiple duos in like a five year span of top 100 catching prospects, like at close to equivalent levels, uh, pretty rare, I'd have to think. Yeah. Yeah. And especially with Will Smith having already, I mean, they chose Will Smith over Ruiz and that's worked out really, really well for them. 
Um, hopefully Smith is a guy who's going to be around for a long time with the DH, you know, they could get creative with all this. Let's go to the pitching side briefly. This is maybe the most fun one to me because they're names that people are familiar with. And, um, I've asked a couple people this and kind of been surprised by the range of answers. Uh, Emmett Sheehan or Gavin Stone heading into the season. Stone was light years ahead of Emmett Sheehan in prospect rankings. Stone was a guy who was top 50 on every national list. Basically you could find. Um, some people had him basically on par with or or in the same tier as Bobby Miller. Emmett Sheehan um, was nowhere to be seen. He was going to be starting the year at double A. Well, he jumped straight from double A to the major leagues. And there are a lot of people who actually prefer Emmett Sheehan to Gavin Stone. So, Justin, I'll ask you, are you one of them? Is Emmett Sheehan a guy you would rather hold on to if a team said, hey, we want one of these two guys? Uh, would you choose say, well, we're going to keep Sheehan. You can have Stone. So I do want to note a similar thing here where. I don't think they'll deal Stone right now or, you know, a, a team that's buying him, you know, isn't just buying him, you know, at, at his lowest value because uh, obviously he's had his struggles both at AAA and in the majors. Uh, anyways, close again, uh, I would go with Sheehan uh, based on the fastball quality. Uh, I think that, that's where Sheehan kind of sets himself apart from Stone and obviously a lot of other guys in the system too. Um, it's a really good fastball. Velocity is better. Um projects to get more whiffs too, which I think uh, one thing we've seen with the Dodgers and how they've drafted is uh, they kind of build these pitchers off of their fastballs and Sheehan's got the better one. Now, just quickly, are you down on stone dramatically compared to where you were at the beginning of the year? Or does that have way more to do with Emmett Sheehan's meteoric rise? I wouldn't say dramatically. I, I think you have to be down somewhat just because he struggled uh, but Sheehan's also uh, been great, and I know he's struggled the last few starts at uh, in in the majors. But uh, you know what, what he did in his first career start. Um, you know, not a lot of guys can do that. Uh, you know, even even though since hasn't been as good. Um, this is a guy who hasn't pitched an inning at Triple A, by the way. For those who forget about that, uh, he came straight from Double A to the majors. He was at, in OKC. He was promoted, but he never threw an inning. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, if not for the Dodgers injury struggles, he would have spent the last month and a half in AAA continuing to develop. Uh, he was kind of thrust in the rotation. I think he's he's mostly made the best of it. Yeah. Hey, we need an official ruling. Does Emmett Sheehan get to go on the Michael Grove list of guys Andrew Friedman has promoted directly from AA or because he was technically promoted to AAA? And then even though he never pitched to the major leagues, we need Justin Lorber's ruling on this. Um, uh, well, how, how do we it was never an official roster move. Okay. So it is, uh, yeah, he, the, the, he was promoted to double A or promoted to triple A, but the roster move was never officially logged, at least, uh, to my knowledge. Okay. There we go. So he gets a, he, him and Michael Grove, two of the, I think the only two guys that Andrew Friedman has ever promoted directly from double A. Um, a yeah. couple more here. This one's maybe a little m more of a deeper cut for people who follow prospects. Uh, Yorbeat Vivas and Eddie's Leonard. Uh, many people might be surprised to know both these guys are on the 40 man roster. They've been on the 40-man roster for nearly two years at this point. Uh, both middle infielders, both nowhere near the major leagues. Um, where are you at on these two? Is there a guy you like more than the other? Could 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 you see the Dodgers moving both? Give me give me the the quick thoughts on Vivas and Leonard. This one is probably the easiest one so far, and that's not you know not a detriment uh, to any of the other players. But uh, I really like Yorbit Vivas. Um, Hit tool is good. He's got a little bit of pop. He walks as much as he strikes out. Uh, can play second, can play a little bit of third. So uh, I, I like him as a guy who um, sh I, I would like to see him move up to AAA at some point. Um, Leonard, I think, has fallen a little bit in, in prospect circles. His value has dropped a little bit. Um, I, I think if you were you know, taking stock of the 40 man this offseason and he wasn't on it, he wouldn't necessarily be a lot to be added. So um, uh, yeah, we'll go Vivas there. Okay. Last one here. And this is the longest list. So I apologize. These are all of the other pitchers. You know, I joke that it's basically the double a rotation, but it was the double O rotation. Now you've got, you know, Bruns who's on this list. Who's, who's down in high a, I believe all the way up to triple a couple of these guys, the major league. So Pepio and Grove is the guys who have kind of already made it to the major league level. You've got Frasso, Nestrini, Ryan, Bruns, Knack or Hurt. It is worth noting that Frasso and Knack, I believe those two, I'm not sure about Hurt, but Frasso and Knack for sure, both would need to be, and Hurt, all three would need to be added to the 40-man um, 
this offseason. Of course, Pepio and Grove already on the 40-man roster. So, I mean, I'm not going to ask you to rank all eight of these guys or however many I've got, but are there a couple on here that you um, would maybe be more likely, more willing to, to include in a trade than others? I don't know about one in particular that I'd be more willing to include. I know there's there's one that I really wouldn't want to give up uh, okay. if I got to only protect one, and that would be Nick Frasso. Okay. Uh, just the upside's really, really high. Uh, you know, the arm talent, the stuff, uh, fastball, slider, and changeup all, you know, all look like potential plus pitches. So uh, there's, you know, there's still a little bit of reliever risk there. He's still developing. Uh, this is his first full season back from Tommy John. He was back most of last season, but uh, was on, you know, pretty tight leash. This is his first, you know, complete season back from Tommy John. And, uh, you know, he, he is a little bit, older than I think people might expect. Uh, I think he's, I think he might be 24 and look at his exact age. But anyway, if I had yeah, to 25, him, you've got him on your, on your list, you've got him at 24.8. Yeah. So almost 25. Um, but this list is kind of indicative of what we were talking about earlier. Uh, you know, doesn't include Sheehan or stone or Bobby Miller. Uh, Dodgers have a ton of talented young pitching and everyone but Maddox Braun is a double A or above. So, uh, you know, I think if they're looking to make a move, these are the guys that other teams are going to come calling about uh, because they know, they see that, you know, the Dodgers can't have all of these guys in their rotation or in their bullpen. Uh, I mean, they can't keep all of them at triple A forever. So uh, I, I would expect if they do make a, a decently notable move, uh, you know, it might be one of these starting pitching prospects. Let me shrink this real quick. Pepio and Grove are the two names that most people are most familiar with. Um, if, if you could only choose to keep one of those two, I know Pepio is the guy who's been higher ranked um, for much of the time, obviously has dealt with some injury stuff. Grove, you know, is sort of a mixed bag. He's flashed swing and miss. The velocity has ticked up, but the performance hasn't followed. So I'm curious if you could only keep Pepio or Grove, who would you prefer to keep at this point? I, I guess so. I would say Pepio, um, because I'd like to see what he would do in in kind of the situation Grove has been in with an extended major league yeah. uh, opportunity. Um, Grove has had that, and I feel like he's definitely improved. Um, but I think the ceiling on Pepio is a little higher. I, I don't know for sure, and that's kind of what I would like to see. He hasn't, yeah. you know, he beat out Grove uh, for the fifth starter spot. Yeah. I think in the in spring yeah. training, right? Yeah. Uh, so he was going to be the guy who had the fifth role um, and then got hurt. So I'd like to see what he could do with the rotation spot for a month or two. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, and I joked a couple of years ago that Pepio could be an elite reliever if he, if he ever gets, you know, doesn't make it as a starter. It feels like with the changeup that he has and, and an upper nineties fastball, if it's still there, um, that would be a, a pretty devastating mix for a guy coming out of the bullpen. So Justin, we appreciate the time. Folks, you can follow him at Future Dodgers on Twitter, uh, futuredodgers.com. He's got a prospect portal that's incredible. It's the best resource I've got for 20 for 40 man roster deadlines, uh, rankings, ages of prospects, what level they're at, all that kind of stuff. He does a great job. And as he said, there is going to be a midseason update coming pretty soon. So make sure you follow Justin. Uh, my name's Jeff Spiegel. As always, check out dodgerblue.com for the latest. Follow here, subscribe, ring the notification bell, Dodger Blue 1958 on YouTube as well, because we are going to be posting tons of content up until and through the trade deadline. You will not want to miss any of that. So enjoy the rest of your day. And as always, go Dodgers.